Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here, and I unfortunately have recently had quite the outbreak of spider mites in my home. And you guys know, I've talked about it before, how much I hate spider mites, and this time I was just so fed up, I was so depressed, I was on the verge of tears, and I finally decided I had just about had it with all of the spider mite treatments that I had attempted to use in the past, and that I was gonna start making my own treatment. And so today I'm gonna to take you through what that treatment is, how to make it at home yourself, and I'm here to tell you it works. It really does work, and it is an excellent preventative treatment as well to prevent other pests from getting on your plants. So I'm gonna be using this moving forward once a month on every single plant in my home, regardless of whether I see signs of bugs or not. And I would recommend that you consider doing that as well, because it's always easier to prevent it up front than to treat it later on. So I'm gonna tell you everything you need here in a second, but I do wanna start out by letting you know this is completely 100% organic, natural remedy. It is safe for your pets. Once again, don't let them like go drinking the entire mix or anything like that. But if they're around while you're spraying it and everything, it's not gonna be harmful to them. It's not harmful to you. It's not going to harm your plants. And I will tell you, I have sprayed every single plant in my house multiple times now with this spray and I have not had a single problem with any leaf loss, leaf burn, anything. So I highly, highly, once again, recommend trying this treatment on your own. So here's what we're gonna need to do this. You're gonna need some kind of spray bottle. I went ahead and ordered on Amazon one of these power pump sprayers where you just pump it to build up the pressure and then you can just hold the trigger down and it just continuously sprays so that you're not having to constantly be pulling a trigger like on a regular spray bottle. Just a disclaimer, none of this stuff that I'm recommending today is sponsored in any form or fashion, but I will link all of it below for you in the description. So this one actually holds, I believe, let's see, a half a gallon. And so I would recommend if you have a lot of plants, getting a big spray bottle like that. If you only have a few plants you're doing and you wanna use just one of those little handheld spray bottles, that's fine as well. We are going to be using some soaps in this mixture. And before I tell you the exact soaps that you're gonna need, I wanna be clear up front that a lot of home remedies that I have seen online and in other videos talk about using dish soap. That's a broad term. So. The soaps I'm gonna recommend technically could be used for dishes, but they're not your standard dish soap that most of you probably have at home. Think like Dawn or things like that. Do not use regular dish soap, please. There are a lot of chemicals and things in your regular dish soaps that are not gonna be in these soaps that I recommend to you, and they could hurt your plants. What you want is Castile soap, and I'm gonna recommend, this is Dr. Wood's brand, I'm gonna recommend this one. I read a bunch of different reviews on the various Castile soaps that are the type that we need today. And these Dr. Woods ones had the best reviews and they've worked great for me. And so these aren't natural and organic. There's not any chemical things in there that are in like your Dawn type dish soap. So just trust me on this one get the Castile soap. So this is the tea tree version of Dr. Wood's Castile soap. So this has tea tree oil in it, and tea tree oil is going to kill the larval and egg stage of the bugs that we're gonna be targeting with this solution that we're mixing up today. And I will tell you right now, this is really only gonna be effective towards your soft-bodied pests in terms of killing your soft-bodied pests and getting rid of an infestation, but this also, like I said, is a great preventative for all types of pests in deterring them from coming on your plants in the first place. So just keep that in mind. And then you also wanna get the Dr. Woods Peppermint Castile Soap. And so this one's gonna have peppermint oil in it. And peppermint oil is the deterrent that we're using. Bugs do not like peppermint. They will avoid it. So that is what this is for. This is the preventative piece of the puzzle. Everything else that we're including in here is designed to kill anything that is already there. So those are our two soaps. We also then are gonna need what I will call our more traditional medicines, if you will, and that is gonna be your isopropyl alcohol and your hydrogen peroxide. So for your isopropyl alcohol, I do wanna specify 70% isopropyl alcohol. Don't go too high on this, like just don't do it. Just stick to the 70% isopropyl alcohol. And guys, I know you're like, oh, now I gotta go buy this and I gotta buy that and I gotta buy that. Go to your dollar store. You can get these two for like $1.25 each is what it cost me at my local do dollar store. That's not that bad. So isopropyl alcohol, then you are gonna need the hydrogen peroxide. This is just standard 3% 
hydrogen peroxide, and it's the basic hydrogen peroxide I use for anything related to my plants. But between these two, the alcohol and the hydrogen peroxide are both going to help to kill the bugs on contact, especially the adult bugs. So that's why we want to use these in our mixture today. You are also going to need some room temperature water. It can be just tap water. It can be filtered water, distilled water, whatever you prefer, but just make sure it's room temperature. You're also going to need a liquid cup measure for both your water and for our rubbing alcohol when we get to that point. You're going to need a quarter cup just dry measure. We're going to be using this for our soaps. And then you're gonna need one and a half teaspoons. So I've got a teaspoon measure and then a half teaspoon measure for the hydrogen peroxide. So I also wanna take a moment to say how I came about using this mixture. So in my research, in watching my other videos from other YouTubers and plant owners on pest control, I knew a lot of these things worked individually in various ways against pests, both to get rid of them and to deter them. I had seen people talk about mixtures they had made before, but they always seemed to be lacking a little bit. And then I finally came across a video by a guy who actually works for a company that makes plant fertilizers, talking about his combination in which all of these things were used. And suddenly I was like, that's it. That's the one. That's the one that makes the most sense to me, knowing what I know about all of these products. I feel like that's gonna work. And considering he works with plants all day, I figured he probably knows what he's talking about. So I did make one small tweak to his recipe though, because the ratio and everything of the hydrogen peroxide to me seemed slightly off. So I did make one adjustment and I find that that one adjustment actually, I feel like was necessary. It didn't cause any problems, like I said, with the plants and it's been effective. So this is kind of like a combination of his stuff, some other people's ideas and my initial thoughts and now my final thoughts combined into one for what I really think is one of the most effective treatment. And this is basically what I would call the, the amount that you're gonna want for if you really just have a few plants that you're doing. If I was doing all of my plants in my house at the same time, I would double the amount of everything I'm telling you here. And honestly, if I was doing all my plants in my house, I would probably have to fill this thing twice over to get them all done. But a lot of you probably don't have quite as many plants as I do. So I'm just gonna give you what is my half recipe. And if you need more, just double everything I'm saying here. So we're gonna start, we've got the four cups of water in here. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. And then to that four cups of water, I am going to first add the soaps. So I'm gonna do an eighth of a cup. So I do have a quarter cup measure because I don't have an eighth cup measure. I don't know if it's really even standard when you buy a set. Anybody out there actually have an eighth dry cup measure? I don't, but it does have a line where the half point is. So I'm just gonna fill this quarter cup measure halfway up so that I'm only doing an eighth of a cup of both of the soaps. So I'm gonna start with the peppermint one and I'm gonna do an eighth of a cup of the peppermint. So I've got this halfway filled with the peppermint soap and I'm just gonna carefully pour it in here. It is a nice thick soap. So if you watched my video I did on store-bought pesticides, one of the things I talked about was it's kind of important to make sure that whatever you're spraying to treat your plants isn't just gonna immediately run off the leaf and not actually absorb or stay there long enough to do its job. And these two soaps are very thick soaps, and so they're gonna help this treatment to stay on there long enough to do its job. So now I'm just gonna, once again, fill my quarter cup measure up half the way because I only want an eighth of a cup of the tea tree soap. And then we're gonna add that in as well. And the nice thing is these two soaps really smell kind of nice. <laughs> so you're not really gonna have like some stinky soap situation going on. So I've got that in there now and I will say I just said they smell nice on their own. I will say that when you combine them together, the smell gets a little bit weirder, but I still think it is better smelling than neem oil, for example. So there is that at least. So from here, we're gonna move on to adding our alcohol and our hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to add both of these into my liquid cup measure first and then pour it in just because I find it to be a little bit easier than trying to, you know, use your tiny little teaspoon measures over that and not accidentally spill it everywhere, you know what I mean? So you're gonna need to do half a cup of your 70% isopropyl alcohol. And then to that, we are gonna add one and a half teaspoons of your 3% hydrogen peroxide mix. 
So that's not like a ton of hydrogen peroxide, but trust me, it is enough to get the job done. So I'm just gonna do my one teaspoon here first. Try not to make a mess. And I still made a little bit of a mess, but oh well. We've got our half teaspoon measure next. Get that in there. And then really there's no need to go mixing this up, you know, yet in here because we're gonna dump it into our spray bottle and then we're gonna get it all nice and mixed up. So I'm just gonna pour this now into the spray bottle. So we've got everything in the spray bottle now. I'm just gonna screw the lid onto this nice and tight. And then before, if you do have one of these power pump spray bottles, before I charge the pump as it were, I'm just gonna get this nice and mixed up. Just give it a good shaking get it well combined. And then I will say when you are actually applying this to your plants, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're periodically shaking it back up again to make sure that it stays nice and combined and you're getting a little bit of all of those ingredients coming out every time you're spraying. So once you've got that nice and shaken up, so for this one, like I said, it's gonna pressurize by using this pump action here. So I'm just gonna do this until I feel tension starting to build up and I can't really easily press the pump down anymore and then I know it's ready to go. So that's feeling pretty good right now. And so then basically you're just gonna take this and you're going to spray down every surface of your plant. So we're gonna cover the tops of the leaves, the undersides of the leaves, getting down in between the individual stems. And then you do wanna make sure that you're getting the top of the soil as well. And we do wanna spray this pretty much to runoff. So we should see it dripping off of the plant. And I'm gonna give you guys a little, little tip here because nobody really talks about this, but I spray down the pots too. And you know that I like to use cover pots on my plants. I will take the plant out of the cover pot. I will spray the inside of the cover pot, the outside of the cover pot, the bottom of the cover pot, the outside and bottom of the nursery pot because pests like spider mites especially, you can't see them and they can be all over everything. They fall off pretty easily too if you bump something hard enough. So I wanna make sure that everything that could possibly have a pest on it is treated. No more pests, we want no more pests. And while we're on that subject, it is a good idea if you have an outbreak particularly of spider mites, to make sure you're cleaning the surfaces that the plant was sitting on before you put the plant back. So for example, some of the ones that got infected were on my kitchen counter above my sink. I took them into the bathroom, gave them their treatment while they were in there dripping dry. I came in here and I got out the 409 and I went to town on the kitchen counter ledge above the sink. I cleaned the window behind it. I cleaned everything. I do not want a potential for any spider mites to be living over there to get back on the plant after I've treated it and then put it back in its spot. So I'm gonna relocate to the bathroom so that I can show you guys exactly how I spray these plants down. You can see how it works in real life and I am gonna be treating them in the bathroom. It's just really bad weather here right now so I can't take them outside, but you could take them outside as well if you needed to. All right, you guys, sorry you're not gonna be able to see me very well here, um, but we are going to be spraying down my rattlesnake calathea that was in my office just for demonstration purposes here. And I do wanna say real quick, this is so awkward. <laughs> Hi guys, I know this is weird, but I feel weird talking to you when you can't see my face. So I did wanna state real quick that if you are doing this for preventative purposes, I highly recommend waiting until your plant is close to needing to be watered or needing to be watered because you are gonna have a lot of this running down into your soil. And if you have just watered a plant, you don't wanna potentially overwater your plant on accident because of this mixture getting down into that soil. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're doing it for preventative purposes. Because if you already have pests on a plant and you're like me, you're gonna be like, I'm just gonna do the best I can. I want those pests gone right now. But ideally, we don't really wanna be doing it like right after we've watered a plant. Keep that in mind. So I have this all shaken up. So once again, remember if you're doing lots of plants, periodically reshake it up. And the nice thing, like I said about this is I'm just gonna be able to hold down this button and it's just going to spray. And I'm gonna cover one side of the plant and then the other, and I'm gonna make sure I get the pot as well. And you may lose a little bit dirt of dirt, just like I did, but no big deal if you do. But that was real quick and easy, and I've gotten every single aspect of that plant. And that's why I recommend this guy right here. This is making this a thousand times easier, in my opinion, and a thousand times quicker than a spray bottle where you're having to just pull that trigger repeatedly.
So definitely look in the description for this one. Once again, not sponsored. I don't get any kind of kickback. I just highly recommend it to make your lives easier. I'm gonna meet you back in the kitchen. So that is basically it, you guys. And I will say, even though everything I've told you today is that this is gonna kill everything on contact, there is always a possibility that you did not actually get one little surface on that plant, especially if it's a tightly compacted plant with not a lot of space between stems and leaves. So I still highly would recommend if you know there is a pest outbreak, you're just doing it for maintenance purposes, once a month, no need to repeat till the next month. But if you do know you have something like spider mites or mealybugs on a plant, I would recommend doing it once and then a week later doing it again. Maybe even go for a third one, depending on how bad the infestation was, just to be on the safe side. It's better safe than sorry in these situations because you guys know how complicated and difficult it can get the worst an infestation is to get it under control and eradicated. So that's just kind of my, my little I'd rather play it safe tip for you. Now, if you're looking at all this and thinking this is just too much of a hassle, I don't know if I want to deal with this and you really would rather just go buy a pre-mixed store-bought spray, you are more than welcome to do so, but I would highly recommend that you check out this video where I talk about those sprays and which ones work best for what situations before you go do that. Thanks again, you guys. And if you have not yet hit that like and or subscribe button down below, please do so. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha.